Uh, Proverbs chapter 18, if you're there, say I'm there. If you're ready, say let's go. Now, now last week, uh, we began a series uh, entitled Stop, Look, and Listen. Can we get that up there? Uh, we, we began this series uh, entitled Stop, Look, and Listen. Somebody say stop, stop. Look, look, and listen. And, uh, and last week, we talked, about, uh, we talked about the red light, and we said that uh, there were some things that we needed to stop doing. Somebody say stop. And what was, it, what, what was it that we needed to stop doing? We needed to stop our stinking thinking, right? We needed to stop allowing the enemy to come in and to, and to plant his thoughts into our minds. And we needed to displace the thoughts of the enemy and the thoughts of the world and those, and those, and those thoughts from ourselves that are, that, are, that are contrary to the word of God. And we needed to take those things. We needed to, the Bible says, bring them into captivity. Jeremiah uh, said, Oh, God, help me to, to, to take these thoughts like a sheep to be butchered. Remember that? And, uh, and so, so we talked about our thought life. And there were two things we said we needed to do. We needed to reject and replace. Somebody say reject and replace. And so, so today we're going, to, we're going to follow up on that. And we're, we're, we're not going to, we're going to go from the red and we're going, going to go to the yellow. We're going to talk about some things uh, that, that you really need to watch out. Somebody say watch out. Watch out. Turn to your neighbor and tell them watch out. So there, there are some things you need to watch out for. When you come up to a yellow light, what do you do? No, you don't speed up. You slow down. Okay? I, I, know, you know, I know red means stop, green means go, and you know, yellow means go very fast. But, uh, but no, it means slow down. Caution. Watch out. Take it easy. Uh, and so today, there are some things that we need to, we need to watch out for. And so, so we're going to take a look at this yellow light. I want you to finish this poem for me. All of you know it. You've heard it since you were a child. Sticks and stones may, but words will never hurt me. How many of you know that's a lie? That's a huge lie. Sticks and stones may break your bones, and you may recover in a month or two, but words can last forever. Words can give life. Words can take life. Words can encourage. Words can discourage. Words can hurt, words can heal. And today we're going to take a look about watching our words. And I'm going to talk to you about sticks and stones. See, because some of you are like Bam Bam. How many remember Bam Bam? How many ever watched the Flintstones when you were growing up? You know, Fred Flintstone and, 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 and what was his wife's name? Wilma. Wilma. I almost said Thelma. Wilma. And uh, Wilma and, 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 uh, and, and Bam Bam. And what, Bam Bam had this huge club, and Bam Bam walked around, and he just, you know, all the time, bam, 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 bam. And what, he just, he just, and, and he didn't know his own power, right? And, uh, and he had this huge club, and he just went around, and he wrecked everything. And I think some of us, you know, are kind of like Bam Bam with our words. And we walk around, and we, you know, bam, 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 bam. You know, and, 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 and we leave destruction and mayhem in the way. And, and God wants us to know that, uh, that, that the Bible says this, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh, God, my strength and my redeemer. How many of you understand that words are powerful? Words are powerful. Let me say that again. And in fact, the Bible tells us, let's get that scripture up here. The Bible tells us that life and death is in the power of the tongue. Amen. The NIV says the tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. See, see, words are powerful. The Bible says that God took his words, and he created his world. He created this world, and he created all the other worlds. By the spoken word, he stepped out, and he said, let there be light, and there was light. And, and you've read Genesis 1 and 2, and, and, and God, through his word, spoke the worlds into existence. And I need to let you know this morning that you speak your world into existence by your words. Just like God's words had creative power, your word has creative power. And if you speak to yourself and you say, well, I'm just dumb or I'm nobody or I'll never amount to anything or I'll never accomplish anything, that will create your word. Or, or if people speak those things into you and you believe it, that will create your world. All of you have had people do that in your life, right? I mean, you've had people speak life. You've had speak, people speak death. You've had people speak positively. You've had people speak negatively. You've had people encourage you. You've had people discourage you. You have people that, 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 that just began to look at you, and they said, man, you are so beautiful. You are amazing. You can do anything. 
And some of you in this place, you grew up under that, under that umbrella of affirmation, of love and acceptance. Others, not so much. There's some of us in this place, we grew up just the opposite. There are some of us in this place that we were told that we were ugly. And you've been ugly ever since. No matter how beautiful you are, you still look in the mirror and you see something ugly because, because or someone ugly because when you were a little kid, somebody looked at you and said, man, you have a, you have a big nose. Or you got long legs, or you've got, you know, your hair is stringy, or whatever it is that they told you, and, and, and so you've grown up like that. There are, there, there are others, you know, you've grown up worthless because somebody told you you were worthless, and they said, man, I wish I never had you. You're nothing. You'll never amount to anything. And you, and, and you look in the mirror, and all you can see is, is, is somebody who's worthless. Or some of you have been gossiped about or lied to, and you don't trust anybody. Some of you were put on a guilt trip, and man, you've been, in that, you've been on that trip ever since. You were put on a guilt trip, and as you were put on that guilt trip, man, you learned how to put other people on a guilt trip, and the fact of the matter is you're, you're in a house, and, and, and all of your children are on the guilt trip, and your husband's on the guilt trip, and, and everybody's taking that trip with you, and what you need to do is you need to stop tripping out, and you need to get off that trip. Amen. You're taking a trip, man, and you need to get off that trip, and so today we're going to talk about getting off that trip because words can create and words can destroy. Words can keep you out of the promised land. It was words that kept the children of Israel out of the promised land. And we need to understand that we create our world by our words. We used to sing that that, that song when we were in in kids' church, when we were in children's church. I was only in children's church once, okay? So, so... And, and, and that's because the bus came and picked me up on Sunday morning. You know what I'm talking about? And, and so, but I remember every song we sang. And here's one of, the little, one of the songs we sang. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. For the Father up above is. So be careful, little eyes, what you see. There's some old folks like me in this place. Be careful, little Ears what you hear. Be careful, little. This is profound. For the is looking down with love. And then it goes on to say, be careful, little mouth, what you say. See, the Bible tells us that we shall give an account of every idle word that we speak. And for me, that's, that, that, that's pretty scary because I can say some stuff. And I have said some stuff. That I just, I, I spoke and I just wish I could grab it. And take it back right now. But how many of you understand that a spoken word is like taking toothpaste out of a toothpaste tube? You ever try to put toothpaste back in a tube? Doesn't work. And when you speak, those words come out. And the Bible says that we're going to that we're going to give an uh, give an account of every idle word that we speak. And so, so last week we talked about we talked about what reject and replace. Some say reject and replace. Reject ungodly thoughts and replace them with the word of God, right? Yes. So we talked about taking authority in, 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 the, in the battle of the mind. And, and today we're going we're to do two things. We're going to talk about stop and start. Some say stop, stop and start. I'll make it easy for you, okay? Stop speaking noxious, unwholesome, life-taking, putrid words. Stop Ask God to let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in you. And listen, if you, if you walk out of here saying, well, that was a nice little pep talk and that was a nice little, you know, little self-help thing. This, isn't a, this is the word of God. And there's no way that you're ever going to be able to do what God has called you to do in this area unless you have God change your heart. Because it's from the heart that the mouth speaks, Jesus says. And so we can say, man, I'm going I'm to speak positively. I'm going to change my ways. I'm going to do all this thing. And we can have all this resolution, but God doesn't want you to have resolution. He wants you to have a little bit of revolution. And the only way you get revolution is by having a divine contact with God and letting God do something in your heart. So as he changes your heart, your mouth will be changed. Are you with me today? And so, and so, so we're going to be talking about stop. Somebody say stop. Stop your noxious, toxic, useless, life-giving words and start speaking healthy, loving, godly, life-giving words. And so sticks and stones will break our bones. I'm, I'm going to talk about sticks and stones. And the Bible says the, the tongue has the power of life and death. Now, let's take a look at it this morning. Stop speaking worthless words. What's the definition of worthless? Of no use. And I want to ask you how, many of you, how many of you, your words are of no use? Your words are of no value. 
your words are good for nothing. Proverbs 12, 18, it says this, if we can get that on the screen. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 18 says, The words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. See, words can pierce like swords or words can bring healing. Proverbs 15, 4, The soothing tongue is a tree of life, but a perverse tongue crushes the spirit. I think we've all had people say things to us. I, I, I remember when I was, when I was in fourth grade, uh, I, had my, I had my teacher call me in. In fact, it was our principal. Her name was Mrs. Toulouse. And, and she, brought us in, she brought me into her office. Now, I was, I was in her office quite a bit. But, uh, but this was a little bit different because she brought me in the office and I hadn't done anything. <laughs> and so they called me out of class, called me into the office, and here I am going to the office saying, I didn't do anything, <laughs> you know, and she said, she said, she said, Alvin, Al, Alvin, I know, and, uh, and Alvin's my real name, okay, and so uh, she said, Alvin, Alvin, just have a seat, and so I sat down, and she said, she said, Alvin, and I, I, I can see her now, she looked at me, and she said, Alvin, you are, you are one of the most intelligent students that we have in this school, and I went, oh, I'm not in trouble, and so I sat up, I said, yeah, you're talking to me now. And she said, and she said, and, and Alvin, you are, you are, you have a wonderful personality. Alvin, you are a natural leader. Alvin, everybody loves to be around you. And Alvin, you're pretty good looking. I looked at her and I said, you're right. <laughs> I agree with everything you said thus far. <laughs> and, and she said, Alvin, uh, I, have, I have received a call from uh, the, 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 the uh, local newspaper and they want to interview some of our students, and they want to ask the question, what would you do if you were the president of the United States? And she said, I couldn't think of anybody better to represent our school than you. And so the local newspaper is going to come, and they're going to interview you if, you if you'd be willing to do that. Because, Alvin, I think you can do anything. Alvin, I think you are so intelligent, and you are so, you are so charismatic, and you are, you are such a natural leader. And, Alvin, I think you, one day you could be the president of the United States. And, man, I walked out of there thinking, man, I could be the president of the United States. It should be me instead of Obama up there. <laughs> Someone say amen. amen. But, but at any rate, <laughs> at, any, at any rate, at any rate, uh, we, we need to understand, see, see, see words... Words can encourage and words can build us up or words can tear us down. And, and there are words that people say to us and there are words that we, we, we say to other people. And those are the two levels of words. How many of you understand? It's the words that people say to us and it's the words that we say to other people. And so there are words that's, that, that people say to us. I, I, I remember another time. There was another time in my life in which, see, see I, was, I was given away when I was like a month old. My mom was an alcoholic. A lot of you know my story. I don't, I, I'm not going to uh, belabor that point. But uh, mom gave me away when I was like a month old. And uh, in the native culture, uh, it, it's, it's, it's not unusual for, for people to give their children to their relatives. And so uh, my, mom, my mom was an alcoholic, and she, and she began to give away her children. Mom had nine children, and I think she gave like, like five of us away. And, uh, and, and, so, and so she gave my sister to my grandmother, and she gave another sister to, a, to, to uh, one of my aunts, and she gave one of my brothers to one of my aunts, and she gave me to one of my aunts. And so, you know, growing up, uh, she was, I was given to, to my aunt when I was like a month old, maybe two months old. And so I grew up, and I didn't know any, any, anything different other than, as I looked at this, at this lady, I thought she was my mother, Right? And I looked at these kids in the household, and I thought they were my brothers and sisters. And they were all a little older than I was. They were like, the youngest one was like eight years older than I was. And, uh, and so I remember one day, I was probably about five years old, and they were probably like 13, 14, 15, something like that. And one day, uh, they got around me, and, and we were in the living room, and I can remember it just as clear as day right now. Uh, they got around me, and one of, them, one of them said, you're not our brother. And another one looked at me, she said, uh, yeah, mom found you. And, and, and uh, she said, mom found you in the garbage can. And, 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 and somebody thought that was pretty funny, so they decided to, to take it to another level. And, and, and the other one said, no, 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 mom didn't find him in the garbage can. Mom found him in the toilet. And, uh, and I, they thought it was pretty funny, but to me, that was one of the most traumatic times in my life. 
because here I was thinking that these guys were my brothers and sisters, thinking that this lady was my mom. Nobody had taken the, the opportunity to sit down and tell me what the deal was. And then I hear these guys saying that I was found, that I was, you know, that I was discarded, that I was found in the trash can. And, and, and so I grew up thinking that I was no good. I was unwanted, that I was trash. And so all of my life, I found myself, when I was hanging out with my friends, trying to be the biggest, the baddest, the best, whatever it was, just so I could fit in with the crowd. you understand what I'm saying? And I was always looking for that sense of belonging, that, 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 that sense of belonging, and, and, and all, all stemming from some kids getting around me and telling me through their words this negative, this negative thing. And so we've had people speak positive, we've had sp people speak negatively in our lives. And, and so, you know, we, we, can't, we can't control what everybody says to us. How many of you know that? But we can control what we believe. Can I say that again? You Turn to your neighbor tell them, you can't control everybody, but you can control what you believe. And, and so what we need to do is we need to learn how to control what we believe. I, I, you know, as I was studying, I came across this app. There's an app for the iPhone. And, uh, and, and if you have an iPhone or if you have a smartphone, you can get this app. It's called Truth or Trash. Now, there's some of you, uh, there, there's, a, there's a family uh, by the name of Yates. It was Ty and, uh, and I think his wife's name is Sheila or something like that. Anyway, uh, they have small kids, and their kids are a little older now. They're like, they're, they're like 10 or 12 or whatever it is. And as their kids were growing up, what they wanted to do is they wanted to train their children in this area of what to listen for and to distinguish between what is true and what is untrue. And so they developed this game. And it's called Truth or Trash. And so what they would do is they would ask their kids a question. And their kids would, through the word of God, answer that question. And if it was true, they'd, they'd, they'd say, true, 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 true. And if it was trash, they'd stomp on the ground and say, trash, trash, trash. That's trash. That's just trash. And they, and they, and they just had this game with their kids. And uh, if you can download the app. Uh, I, think we've got, I think we've got a couple of questions from it. Uh, this is what the app looks like. It says, faith without action is dead. Tell me, truth or trash? Truth. 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 Faith without action is dead. And so what they would do is they would say truth, and they would get it correct. Uh, because the Bible says when we believe God, we will do uh, we will want to share his love with others and do the works he has called us. And so say, they would say, true. And, and they say, yeah, according to the word of God, here's what the Bible says. And the kids would all dance around, true, 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 true. And, and so then they'd ask him another question. And uh, something like, is there, is there, there's nothing important about my life. What is that? That's trash. That's trash. Why? Because the Bible says God has a plan for your life. You are important to God. So what they would do, trash, trash, trash. That's trash. That is just devil trash. I don't believe that in Jesus' name. I'm not trash. God, I am important. Hello? And I know that's a game, and maybe some of you need to download that in, on, your, on your phone and just, and just go through some of that and find out who you are in God. Amen? And we need to find out what is truth and what is trash? Because you are not what others say you are. You are who and what God says you are. Let me say that again. You are not what others say you are. You are who and what God says you are. Therefore, you need to guard your heart from worthless words. Amen? Worthless words that, that others say to you or worthless words that you say to yourself. See, because some of you are like me. Some of you just, some of you, just you know, you, you speak worthless words to yourself. Well, I guess I'm nothing. I guess I'll never amount to anything. I guess I'll never make it. This is too hard for me. This marriage, I just can't handle it. And so what do you do? You speak those worthless words and you talk yourself out of the blessing. So you need to, you need to learn to speak wholesome words. The Bible says, Ephesians 4.29. I love this verse. Because sometimes we just need to stop and shut our noxic trap. Amen. Can I say that again? Yeah. You came, to the, you came to the house of God, and God told you to shut your trap. I mean, I, 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 your pastor, <laughs> uh, I, 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 that, that wasn't that. Let's go back here. <laughs> it said, <laughs> I just think, what in the world did I just say? Uh, it says, do not let un, any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. How many of you, mean, how many of you know that means shut your trap sometimes? So I'm not saying anything that's not biblical. So do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. 
but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. Oh, I love this. If this church, if our marriages, if our families could just get a hold of this one verse, it would change our lives. It would change our relationships. It would change the dynamic of our homes. Do not let any unwholesome talk come. What if, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if you're about ready to say something and you just... What if God did that to you? Every time you're going to say something negative, oh, I just think you're... But every, every, every good thing came out, came out like, that would that, be cool. But God doesn't do that. God leaves that up to you, right? And so do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. I, I don't know about you. I just love it when my wife speaks positive things in my life. It doesn't even matter what it is. We, were, we, were, we went shopping the other day. We were at Costco, and we came out with a bunch of groceries, and I was loading them onto the car, and, and, and so, you know, I took the, I took the big, the, the, you know, the, the cases of water and, and, and whatever it was, and, and then I took the smaller things, and I took the bread and put it on top and, and all that, and, and she was just standing there watching me, and, and she said, honey, you are the best grocery putter awayer ever. <laughs> and I said, yeah? She said, yeah, you're my hot husband. <laughs> That's old baby. You're my sweet wife. And I took the cart. <laughs> Put the cart away. <laughs> and it doesn't take a whole lot, right? Doesn't take a whole lot. Ladies, just, 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 just tell him. Tell him. When, when I, I, there were some ladies that say, oh, man, my husband this and my husband that. And they're just, you know, they're talking negative. And, and listen, if you talk, continue to talk negative and tell him all the things he can't do and all the things he's doing wrong, he's going to continue to do the things wrong. Because if you tell him all the things he can't do, he's never going to be really what you want him to be. But if you start looking, see, there, there are some ladies that say, oh, man, my husband's just not spiritual. My husband never prays. My husband never reads the word. My husband, my husband never does anything spiritual. Well, here, here's, here's my counsel to you. Catch him doing something spiritual. If you're cruising down the road and he's, turning, he's, he's going through the radio and he stops on the Christian station for 12 seconds <laughs> before going on, catch it. Oh, honey, honey, oh, you stopped. Caleb. Yeah, that was awesome. And then, and then just, and then keep telling. And next time you're cruising down the road, it's going to be, it's going to be 30 seconds. He's going to look at you. <laughs> right? And maybe he never prays. And, 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 and maybe on Thanksgiving he says, can, can I pray? Or maybe somebody asks him to pray and he doesn't even know how to pray. And he says, all right, I think you bow your heads and close your eyes, right? Okay. Bow your heads, close your eyes. God, thank you for this dead bird. Amen. <laughs> and all year you just say, oh, man, honey, that dead bird tastes so good because of your prayer. Oh, honey, you would just, oh, heaven came down when you said, God, thank you for that dead bird. And you just, and you put, and before you know it, he's asking to pray. Before you know it, he's asking to come to church. Before you know it, he's in the world. Why? Because you're stroking, you're feeding that fire and you're fanning that flame and you're doing it with your words. Never speak unwholesome words, but speak only that which is edifying to build them up. And if you speak that into their life, they're going to be it. Good preaching, pastor. Thank you. You see, we need, to, we, need to, we, we, need to, we need to speak words of life. We need to speak. Stop speaking worthless words and start speaking words of life. Start speaking words of life even to your circumstances and your situation. Like I said, so many people like me, they say, well, I'm going to blow it. This isn't going to work. I'm not good enough. I'm overwhelmed. And yet the Bible says this in Mark chapter 11, verse 23. Jesus said this, truly I tell you. Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believes that what he says will happen, it will be done for him. Somebody, says, if anybody, somebody, somebody say, if anyone says. If anyone says. Can I tell you this morning, there are some of your mountains that will not respond to any voice but yours. 
And when they hear your voice because of your word, they'll re be removed and cast into the sea. That's exactly what David did when Goliath came and he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And he went down in the valley. And David wasn't doing some, you know, name it, claim it. He wasn't, he wasn't doing some positive confession. He was looking at Goliath. And he knew that Goliath was, was not in covenant with God. That's why he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God and David knew that he was circumcised and circumcision was the representation the outward representation of the covenant with God and so David knew I'm 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 in covenant with God and he's not in covenant with God and the Bible says whenever we go to war that God will fight our battles and so I'm going to speak this and he said he said who are you you uncircumcised Philistine that you should defy the armies of the living God today God God is going to give you into my hands and I'm going to cut your head off and I'm going to feed your flesh to the birds of the air and the fowls of the field and they will know that there is a God in Israel. Hallelujah. What was he doing? He was, he was taking those words that Goliath was speaking and he was pushing them away and deflecting them and he was, he was speaking the word of God and as he spoke the word of God, the word of God is what gave him the victory in that day. Whoa, I'm just going to have me a little Pentecostal break. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. It's the word of God. Speak the word. Let, let, let positive, life-giving words come out of your mouth. What do we do? We align our words with his truth. If the word says it, we say it. I said, if the word says it, we say it. We align our words with his truth. And we speak his truth to our circumstances. And when we speak his truth to our circumstances, God turns things around. I had a pastor who had a guy walk into his office not long ago. Well, I shouldn't say that. It's been, it's been several years. The pastor had a guy walk into his office and the guy said, Pastor, I just wanted to meet with you because I want to let you know I'm going to commit suicide. He said, I'm wanting to know if you'll do my funeral. And the pastor said he had attended seminary, but he said nothing seminary ever taught him, prepared him for this. He said, and he called upon the name of the Lord real quick. And he said, God, I just need your wisdom. And God spoke to his heart and God said, get out a legal pad and have him write down a hundred positive qualities about himself. And so he, he was talking with him and, and, and he said one of the things seminary did tell him, teach him, was to find out whether or not they knew how they were going to do it. Because if he knew how he was going to do it, then he was really serious about it. And so he asked him about that, and the guy said he knew everything that he was going to do and how he was going to do it and planned it all out. And so, and so God gave him that word, and he took out this legal paper, and he said, I'll do your funeral. He said, but before, before we go there, I, I, I want you to do something for me. And the guy said, okay, what can I do for you? took that legal pad and he slid it across the, the desk and he said, I want you to give me a hundred qualities, a hundred positive qualities. Give me a hundred good things about yourself because if I'm going to do your funeral, I got to be able to say something good. The guy said, okay. He said, uh, you know what? There's really nothing good about me. And the pastor said, sure there is. You can think of one thing. You can think of a couple of things. Go ahead. Just, just, just think about it. He said, Pastor, there's really nothing good about me. He said, uh, he said yeah, there is. Come on. There's got to be something. He said, okay. Um, my little sister looks up to me. He said, good, good, good. Write that down. Write that down. Your little sister looks good. L -l looks up to you. That's, that, that's awesome. That's a good thing. He said, uh, he said, I'm funny. People say I'm funny. He said, yeah, 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 you're funny. You're funny. I think you're funny. Go ahead. Put that down. You're funny. Good, good, good. 
He said, uh, number three, there are some people tell me I look like Robert Redford. <laughs> Pastor said, no, 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 you're funny. <laughs> you're funny. <laughs> Go to the next one. And, <laughs> and so, and so you know, he said, well, you know, when I was in sixth grade, I led somebody to Jesus. And pastor said, there you go, there you go. Think of something else. He said, I play guitar. There you go. That's a great thing. That's a great thing. I, it's good to know. And so, and so they, 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 they got to about 25, and the, and the, and the, guy, the guy started crying. And, 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 and so they, they, they worked through it, and, and, and they, got, they got to 100, and, and, and the guy was crying, and the pastor prayed for him. The pastor took that... that, that uh, legal pad and he and he and he ripped the sheet off and he folded it up and he gave it to the guy and he said I want you to carry this I want you to take this and every time you think about those suicidal thoughts I want you to look down that list and see all the positive things about yourself he said it had been probably 13 14 years since he had seen the guy he was preaching one day got down between services he was out in the lobby and lo and behold who comes but this guy with a lady and a little girl and he comes up and says, Pastor, you remember me? And the pastor goes, yeah. He says, dude, how you doing? Man, what's up? And so they started talking. He said, this is my wife. He looked at her and he said, man, you got a funny husband. <laughs> she said, yeah, I know. And, and he said, this is my daughter. And, and they, were just, you know, they, were just, they were just talking and whatnot. And he reached into his pocket and he opened up his wallet and he pulled out that piece of paper that he had carried for like 13 or 14 years. And he handed it to the pastor. He said, you remember this? And the pastor said, yeah, I remember that. He said, pastor, you can have it because those words are on my heart now. Isn't that awesome? I just think that is awesome. And so... So we need to, we need to speak life-giving words to ourselves. when we need to speak life-giving words to other people because life-giving words can be life-transforming. We need to say things like, hey, we can do this. Or, hey, we can get out of debt one day. Or, or hey, uh, we, can, we can see my dad coming to Jesus this year. Or, hey, our marriage can get better. You see, your spiritual enemy is the father of lies. Somebody say lies. And you need to just start stomping on those lies and telling those lies, get out of here in Jesus' name. This is not of my father. This is of the enemy. Amen? Amen. Amen. You see, I believe. I believe I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Is that truth or is that a lie? That's truth. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe that my God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I'm able to ask or think according to the power of God that works in me. Truth or trash? Truth. Truth. I believe that I am an overcomer through Christ. True. I believe that I'm blessed going in and I'm blessed coming out. That I'm the head and not the tail. That I'm above and not beneath. Truth or trash? Truth. I believe that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is living inside of me. And if that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is living inside of me, it shall also quicken my mortal body. Hallelujah. Is that truth or is that trash? That's truth. I believe that God is at work in my relationships and that all things work together for the good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Is that truth or is that trash? That's truth. I believe believe that an, a, a word fitly spoken is going to bring healing where there is hurt and life where there is death and light where there is darkness. Is that true or is that trash? It's truth. I believe that God can use my words to help my children to become all that God has called them to be and to, and to help my grandchildren to fulfill their destiny. And I as a Christian, I as a follower of Jesus Christ will not I refuse to let poison come out of my mouth and kill somebody. I will let the Spirit of God come up out of my mouth and build the people up around me, speaking life to myself, life to my family, life to my associates, life to my church, life to my situation, life to my circumstances, because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. That's the truth. There is power in the tongue, life and death. And as a follower of Jesus Christ, I will speak his words, words of life and not words of death. Some of us need God to help us do that. 
because we've been, we've been sowing so many, so many toxic seeds, so many noxious seeds, so many words of death, bringing our family down, telling our sons what they cannot do rather than telling them what they can do, speaking to our daughter, negativity, and bringing them down and putting upon them burdens too heavy to bear. And God says to you, it's time for you to stop letting unwholesome talk come out of your mouth and start speaking life to your family, your friends, and everybody around you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Stand with me this morning.